I think we'll continue this discussion, but to begin with, I would like to make use an opportunity also to make a report with my presentation. So now I'll be into hierarchies here, and I will start my presentation and share my screen. Just a second. I'm really sorry. Dima, just bottom a second. Right. Bottom right or left for you? Yeah. I beg your pardon. Thank you. So, I'll try to say a few words about geospatial technologies uh, impact in such a phenomena as strategic stability. So, main sphere of my research is related to this global. Screen, could you please uh, enable full screen mode? We still cannot see your screen. Uh, you have to double click. Again. You see anything at all? We just see, yeah, but you need to just enable full screen mode, please. Okay, sorry for that. No, no problem. I'll do it, I'll do it once again, but... Um, yeah. How is it now? Perfect, perfect. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry about this. So, I have already mentioned what I'm going to talk about. So, let's talk about the content. I'll try to formulate what kind of strategic stability threats are related to development of uh, geospatial technologies development, what kind of role they can have, how to stabilize the destabilizing and positive effects, and uh, which uh, solutions are possible. I'll try not to take too much time so that we would have time for discussion. And I'm grateful to all the other speakers who kept track of the time. So what kind of threats to strategic stability are related to development of geospatial technologies? Strategic stability is understood in quite narrow sense as absence of conditions, absence of stimulus for uh, the first nuclear strike uh, that is fixed in joint uh, American-Soviet uh, statement of 1990. This narrow uh, interpretation is, uh, is enlarged, but in my presentation, I will use the most basic approach. So what uh, are we doing with the spe special technologies? First of all, they create uh, conditions for efficient first strike when we know better about the target of the opponent uh, and um, at any point period of time. That is why it is easier for us to plan our first strike for that to had maximum destructing action overall the infrastructure of the arrival. Thus, we undermine the capability of a, a responding strike of the arrival or we understand perfectly well where this uh, uh, retaliation strike will start from and we use capabilities uh, to prevent from uh, the fact that uh, this uh, retaliation strike can perform their task, that is, bring nuclear charge to our territory. Moreover, this situation stimulates uh, uh, arms race, because if we are afraid of our the vulnerability of our strategic forces, if we see that geospatial technologies make it possible to increase efficiency of the combat operations of our strategic uh, powers, we invest in this area, in this sphere, and we also invest into security forces for our uh, uh, spheres, and it can be passive or active, or it can consist in increase of this or that potential, which, might, put it mildly, is not great. Uh, we have already gone through this path, and uh, I believe that in most capitals of the world, people understand uh, that uh, it's not useful for anyone, but for some companies dealing with production of uh, these products. And it's also very important to mention that is uh, related to expanded uh, explanation of strategic stability, which includes any kind of threats inside the state, that is preparation of material for propaganda. Uh, with the geospatial technologies, so we can, with the different degrees of uh, degrees of persuasiveness, to impact uh, public opinion in the world or in this or that country, trying to uh, pretend that this is that actions in the territory of your partner as uh, uh, not meeting their liabilities or undermining the agreement 
and I will share some examples a little bit later. What is the role of geospatial technologies? As I have already mentioned, here is a reconnaissance and a target in geospatial technologies. Well, it's quite hard to imagine identification of new infrastructure. And here I would like to show you the pictures well, of people who know the nuclear sphere. You should have recognized this this year colleagues from several organizations and commercial satellite shoots found out the mass construction of new launching machines for intercontinental ballistic missiles in china and uh, currently uh, there is a kind of consensus opinion which is supported by american official parties and which is ignored and uh, not commented upon by russian official bodies that china is going to uh, uh, to grow their strategic potential. Well, what is especially interesting, the what screenshot that is shown here, they are concluding uh, development of interactive tool, and uh, people from Federation of American Scientists plan to make it available for everyone, so that everyone who wishes could keep track of the tempo of construction of these mines. Still, there is a discussion whether these are really mines, or there are still some uh ideas that it's also only construction of fields for wind generation for power stations possibly uh, these uh, mines will be not for intercontinental ballistic missiles but for something else maybe it will be false targets it's not that much important but what i want to bring home to you that with the help of what is actually geospatial technology we can see uh, how in real time there is a development of situation with strategic potential of one of the leading powers in the world and against of as well. Uh, just special technologies uh, that make it possible to have a discussion based on uh, practical information. And even though these discussions are not always uh, not always come to the same and only right uh, response, maybe we should not even uh, wait for this, but we should talk about some specific features and I would like to mark that as to the number of uh, uh, directions and crisis elements and architecture of strategic stability uh, in the last decade, actual information was not present. It's uh, lacking for some of the current conflicts of regional nature. Out of bright examples, I would like to mark, well, there was no indication of uh, any uh, violation of the threat of the on behalf of the Russian Federation. So, well, and, well, the conflict on the east of the Ukraine, which is not supported by any data, data from different parties. And once again, it's not strategic sphere, uh, but in the episode with the hit to Russian plane, when it was hit by a Turkish fighter, it was also uh, mutually excluding approaches. There were schemes which, let's put it like this, were criticized from different parties, and they were not correct, as it's believed. And in uh, the special technologies, we can increase mutual pressure, and it's quite obvious that when in mass media there are publications which looks like a true satellite short, let's put it like this, it looks much more convincing for a population and also visible for some people who are decision making. And we can talk about such a phenomena as uh, the washing out of uh, reconnaissance data. Well, this is sources of information, which was partially mentioned by uh, Veronika in her presentation. Well, it can hint to independent experts what kind of commercial sources are used to, to promote the narratives which are interesting for this or that country for different reasons. But actual growth of uh, geospatial data result in the growth of transparency. And now it's not likely that any country can be sure that whatever it is doing, uh, it will remain hidden forever. And due to development of satellite constellations and system of automatized automatic data procession, we can see almost everything by direct and indirect uh, aspects. We can see a lot. Not everyone got used to 
to living in these conditions. First of all, these are state organizations, um, and uh, as far as I can imagine, they have no alternative, they will have to adapt themselves. However, uh, we get more and more information. This is truly a positive effect, and uh, I'm an interested party here, but uh, being representative of the expert and scientific community, it's always uh, more interesting to work with big amount of true information and uh, not some secondary data received from newspapers, from official speeches and so on. At that, also there is growth of potential of strategic means and this term, which many of you know, and, but I will decipher it. The idea is that in most agreements uh, in um, armament control, areas there is obligation for the parties to sustain from negative impact uh, working with the technical means which are understood first of all as uh, the satellites and these technical means i used this as verification tools the tool which confirms that what country claims within the context of the liabilities, how the country complies with the liabilities, and to what extent it meets uh, the reality. The higher potential of strategic technical means, the higher is the truthfulness of the data. And um, even though it's not always like this, but the more we're sure that the data are authentic, and um, if country A will see that country B does not violate uh, liabilities and uh, understanding this, the other party will not even try. Thus, we have an opportunity for joint uh, solutions. If we have infrastructure, if we have some unified geospatial platforms, it's much easier for us to agree in a global form, in a bilateral and multilateral world format. If we have a tool that helps us to adjust our conversation to reality, uh, to adjust it to locality, it always contributes to improvement of efficiency. Thus, we create new rules of the game, and which are very hard to distort. At this, I think I had finished, and I would like to provide only one bright example. Uh, the story with geospatial technologies uh, happened not now during the Caribbean crisis, the anniversary of which we are going to have next year. American uh, reconnaissance uh, planes and satellites collected information about what's happening with the uh, Soviet missiles in Cuba, and uh, they showed this information at the Security Council of UN. One of the pictures is here. Here. And here I would like to tell you, I think uh, the last thought I'd like to share, and it will be a response to my question to all other authors, to all other speakers. The main problem here is that these or that countries uh, do not think it necessary to prove their position, to prove the truthfulness of what they say, regardless of the presence of bigger number of tools. And as I think, the main threat is that uh, we have uh, wonderful tools uh, for providing of a truthful... But for some reasons, they don't use it as much as they use it during the Cold War. I would like to conclude my presentation at this point, and then now it's high time to have our discussion.